In this video, we will show you how to replace your radiator. Let's get started. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to do is come right over to our negative battery terminal. We'll use a 10 millimeter, loosen this nut just enough that we can remove the wire from the top of the battery. Set it aside so it's making no contact. Now that we have the negative battery terminal disconnected, we're going to move along to removing our top cover here. To do that, we'll use a 10 millimeter and remove both of our bolts. The next thing you want to do is reach along to the back side of this and lift straight up. Remove your cover. Now let's move along to removing the air intake from the area. To remove this, we're going to start by removing each of these vent hoses. To remove the vent hose, you can squeeze the clamp, slide it up the hose, remove the hose, give it a quick inspection. Make sure it's soft and pliable. Set it aside. Do the same to the other hose. Now let's move along to the mass airflow sensor wiring harness. We'll use some pliers, carefully squeeze on the two ears on this plastic clip. Slide it out of position from the air filter housing. Once you have it off of there, go ahead and remove the wiring from the mass airflow sensor. Now we can move to our two locking clips that hold the upper air filter box to the lower box. Once you have those broken free, go ahead and lift this up to separate it. Now we'll follow this over to the throttle body. To remove it from the throttle body, you can either use a flathead or an eight millimeter socket. We'll loosen up that clamp just enough that we can remove this. Set this aside. Now let's continue on by getting ready to open up the top of the radiator. Make sure it's cool to the touch, press it down, turn it counterclockwise. Now we can make our way underneath the passenger side front of the vehicle to start draining the coolant. From underneath the passenger side front of the vehicle, you're going to be looking for the lower part of the radiator. You can see that it has the drain right on the passenger side. It has a little area where the coolant will come out from. You want to make sure that you have a way to divert that coolant down into a collection bucket. If you were to have a hose of some sort, you can put that on there and make sure that it goes into a collection bucket so you can recycle it properly. For us, I'm going to go ahead and remove this shield just to get it out of the way so we can have a better view. To remove our skid shield, we're going to start from the back. You're going to have two mounting bolts. Ours has one over here and the other side's broken. For this one, I'm going to loosen it up using a 10 millimeter. Once I have it loose enough, it should be able to slide rearward once we have the forward bolts out. For this last one, I'm going to make sure I'm holding the plate. Now we can lower down the front and slide it rearward to slide it off of the rear bolt. Now that we have the shield down, let's continue on to this area right here. You're going to find that you have a line that goes into the fan shroud. Just carefully separate that. We'll make our way over here and do the exact same thing. Once you have that separated, continue on to draining the coolant. To drain the coolant, you just turn this counterclockwise. Now we can turn this counterclockwise to start releasing the coolant. While this is draining, let's make our way back up top. Now that we have the coolant drained, let's continue on up here at our upper radiator hose. We'll loosen this clamp just enough that we can remove the hose from the radiator. set that aside. Let's move along to our overflow hose, loosen the clamp, remove the hose.
Once you have that off of the radiator, continue following it down to where it connects into the fan shroud. We'll pull it right out of place and set that aside. Down underneath that, you'll find that you have another hose that should be pressed into the fan shroud. Just go ahead and dislodge that. Continue on to your fan shroud bolts. We're gonna loosen these. Leave them in there just a couple threads. Now we can start removing our fan from the area. You'll find that it's held in place with four 10 millimeter headed nuts. Go ahead and carefully remove all of those, leaving one on just a couple threads. Continue on to fully removing your last nut on the fan while holding the fan in place. Once you have that nut off of there, the fan should be able to break free. I'll make sure that I'm holding on to it. I don't want it to fall and hit the radiator. We'll carefully pull this up and out of the area and set it aside. Now that we have the fan out of the way, let's remove the fan shroud as well. Now we can start dismounting the top of the radiator from this area here. For that, you'll find that you have two eight millimeter headed mounting bolts, one on either side. Remove them. Continue on to removing each of your transmission cooler lines from the bottom of the radiator. We'll loosen the clamp. In our situation, it's a quarter inch socket. Slide that clamp down a little bit and then remove the hose from the bottom of the radiator. Make sure you have a collection bucket under here. Continue on to your other transmission line located next to your lower radiator hose. Now that we have both the lines for the transmission cooler off of there, we're gonna continue on to the lower radiator hose. We'll use an eight millimeter or flathead to go ahead and loosen this clamp. Keep in mind when you're removing this, there's the possibility there could still be coolant in the system. So make sure you have your collection bucket under the area. Now we can wiggle this around as needed. You need to be extremely careful doing this though because you do still have air conditioning lines attached to the AC condenser, which is attached right here to the radiator. Now let's move over to the driver's side and remove that eight millimeter headed bolt. Now that we have the bolt off of here, we can carefully remove the bracket that goes to the top of the AC condenser. Go over and do the exact same thing on the driver's side. Now that we have both the brackets out of the way, you can wiggle the radiator around. We're gonna try to lift this up out of its lower bracket area. Now we can move it just enough that we can gain access to our last two eight millimeter headed bolts across the front. All right, we're at the point that we can reach down, grab the AC condenser, which is this right here, and lift it up from the bottom corners of the radiator. Once you lift it up, just slide it forward so it's not sitting in its connection point. You can see I have this one out of here. I'll do the same on the other side. Once you've done the AC condenser, we're gonna continue on to this cooler. Just lift it up and slide it forward. 
Okay, now it's time to carefully grab onto that radiator. We're gonna have to lift it up from its lower mounting points, slide it towards the engine, and then lift it up and out of the engine compartment. There it is, friends. On the bottom of the original radiator, you're gonna be finding these rubber bushings. That's the mount for the AC condenser. You wanna make sure you swap them over to the new radiator. Now let's take our two rubber grommets and put them in place on the new radiator. Slide it in position, do the same on the other side. All right, now it's time to prepare our brand new radiator. You'll find in your kit, it came with a whole bunch of hardware. We wanna take these four square nuts and put them in place across the top of the radiator. They're gonna slide right in. Now on the opposite side of the radiator, we're gonna continue on by putting on these clips. Have a look at them. You'll notice that you have one side that protrudes outward a little bit. That's the side that has the threading for the mounting bolts to go through. So with that said, you wanna make sure that you have the threaded area facing down along the top applications. Once those are slid into place, we'll continue on to these areas. Now for these, you wanna make sure you have the threaded area facing inboard, so we can put the bolts through like this. Once you have all of your clips in there, let's get ready for our installation. As we go to slide the radiator into position, you wanna make sure that the lower little pins slide into their mounting points down inside this area. Let's take that radiator and slowly put it in position, being extremely careful not to damage the fins Now, once you have the radiator carefully set in place along the bottom, we'll continue on with the cooler. You'll notice along the front of your new radiator, you have two slots close to the passenger side. That's where the cooler needs to slide down and into, and then we can put in our upper mounting bolts. Once they're both started, snug them up. We'll lift up on the AC condenser slide it into the brackets on the bottom of the radiator. Now let's continue with the upper brackets for that AC condenser. You wanna have it in this position. Place it right on there, do the same on the other side. Once you have them both on there, go ahead and tug that radiator up against the AC condenser brackets, starting your two mounting bolts. Once they're both started, snug them up. Make sure they're nice and tight. At this point, we can continue on to our two upper mounting bolts. You wanna start each of these in by hand. Once you have them started, snug them up. Let's take that lower radiator hose and slide it in place on the radiator. Press it on there as far as it can go. Put your clamp in its original position and snug it up. You wanna make sure these are nice and tight so you don't have a coolant leak. Now we can continue on to our transmission cooler line. 
We'll slide that into position, pressing it as far as we can against the radiator as well. Put the clamp in position and snug it up. We'll continue on to our other transmission cooler hose. Let's make our way over to the drain. We're going to make sure that this is nice and tight. After that, go ahead and clean up your mass. Let's take that skid shield and put it in place. Slide it into the proper position. Start in all four of your forward mounting bolts. Once all of your mounting hardware is started, tighten it up. After you've tightened the forward bolts, continue on to the rear bolts. Let's continue on putting the fan shroud into position. Looking at the bottom of the fan shroud, you can tell that you have two areas that protrude down. Now if you were to look down inside there, at the radiator, you'll find two areas for those to slide into. Let's line it up, slide it down into position. There we are. Now that we have the fan shroud slid down there, let's continue on by sliding our fan in, being extremely careful for the radiator cooling fins. Bring this down and put it on the studs that are on the pulley. Once it's down there and on the pulley, continue on by putting on at least one of your mounting nuts to hold this in place. There we are. Now we can take that fan shroud and put it up against the radiator. Once it's in place, continue on with your mounting bolts. Now we can put on the rest of the four mounting nuts for the fan. Once you have all the mounting nuts on there, continue on snugging them up. Make sure these are nice and tight. Now we can move along. Connect in your upper radiator hose. Slide the clamp into place. Make sure it's tight. Now let's grab hold of our overflow hose, bring it under the upper radiator hose, and put it in position on top of the radiator. After that, tighten the clamp. Follow that hose down to its connection point inside of the fan shroud. It's going to fit into the top clips. Press that right in there, make sure it's secure. While we're down there, Put in the other hose that goes directly underneath it. Time for the upper air intake. We'll slide this into position. Once you have it in the proper positioning, you'll notice that the little tab on the top of the intake lines up with the tab on the top of the throttle body. Tighten the clamp. Move along to your hoses.
Time for the mass airflow sensor wiring. Make sure you have it secured in the top of the box. And then connect in the connector to the mass airflow sensor. Listen for a click, make sure it's secure. Now we can start reconnecting the top box to the lower air filter box. You want to look down along the inside here. You're going to find three tabs that fit into three corresponding holes. We'll carefully get those situated and then lock them in with our locking tabs. Time for the upper engine cover. You want to have a look at the bottom side. You're going to find that you have two little tabs that protrude down. And if you were to look at the top of the air intake, you'll find the ports for them to slide down and into. Let's carefully put this in position. Line those up, press them in. Continue on with your two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts in the front. Now we can start resecuring these again. Now it's going to be time to fill our cooling system. Keep in mind, this isn't a typical cooling system. It has the radiator fill port here, but all the way over towards the passenger side, you also have a pressurized overflow tank. This isn't the typical type that you just put a little bit of coolant in there, it should be good to go. This has to be filled up to a specific height and this has to be full as well. Now with that said, we're going to start filling this with a funnel. We'll take our little adapter and slide it into position. Once you have it on there, put your funnel on. Now we'll continue on by filling this up with 50-50 pre-diluted manufacturer specified coolant. Now the next thing you want to do is reconnect your negative battery terminal. Slide it all the way up against the battery and tighten that mounting nut. Make sure it's completely secured. Now once you've gotten to the point that you fully filled up the radiator here, and you found that as you are filling it, it also put this up to the maximum, you can go ahead and remove the funnel from the area. That's right out of there. After you've done that, continue on with the radiator cap. Now the next thing that you wanna do is go ahead and start up the truck. You wanna let it run for a little while. Make sure you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents and then double check to make sure you have no coolant leak and make sure it's completely up to the maximum line on the overflow tank itself. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.